Did you know that copper plate calligraphy is based on the oval? Ovals are everywhere in this beautiful script, so if you want to conquer this stroke, just keep on watching. Hi and welcome to day three of the uppercase boot camp, a seven day challenge for practicing the copper plate uppercase basic strokes. I'm Sharice of Pieces Calligraphy and I'm honored to host this boot camp with my friend Nina Tran. If you're new to the challenge, you can catch up anytime. Just jump right in. The link down below to all the information you'll need, including past videos, is in the description box. All right, day three, let's get to these ovals. So we're going to talk about how to create the oval, what to look for in the size and in the shape of the oval. This practice drill will help you build your consistency, especially with the spacing and size of those ovals. It'll help you build your confidence in conquering the pen. Remember, that's our overall goal with these with the boot camp. We just want to conquer the pen. Even though we are focused on the uppercase letters, the goal is to really conquer the pen and have have confidence when we're transitioning from those hairlines to those shades and back again. And especially we just want to continue building that foundation. This is my shorthand for foundation for those uppercase letters because this is the uppercase boot camp challenge and so all of these drills are leading up to that up to that so just be patient and keep practicing with me okay, here we go so if this is my these are my three x heights that i'm using and i'm going to just identify my x height my main x height here this is the baseline this is my header this is my first ascender and this is my second ascender line okay so let's talk about the oval so the oval, you want to start at the second ascender line and you want to start at a hairline. And then as you get onto the slant line, you'll add some pressure. And then as you get off, you'll release that pressure. As you touch down to the baseline, you should already be back to a hairline. And then you're going to want to complete the oval with a hairline. Okay. Let's just get it out there. Look how shaky this is. So don't mind the shakiness. I know even to this day, look at how shaky my letters are. I'm all about form over perfection. So as long as you are paying attention to the structure and the size and the consistency of your shades and your hairlines, I'm not worried about the, sh the shakiness. And trust me, don't worry, it, it is getting to me. I wish it wasn't so shaky. If I were to do this again a little bit faster, I might be able to get rid of it just a little bit. There we go. But I'm still just ever so shaky, so don't worry about that. What I do want to bring your attention to is, let's talk first about the size. Okay, so for the size of the oval, it's gonna depend on your personal preference. Okay, there's always variation out there in the wild. As my friend Nina says, in art, and in calligraphy in general, there's a lot of variation. Your oval may be a lot narrower than mine or it may be more rounder. And so in general, we try to have a standard to go by. So this standard, if you were to take this and pretend that this is the height of the oval, right? About three X height units. So we'll just call this one, two, and three. Take two of those, so two thirds, and imagine that that is the side, that is the width of the oval. Let me use a darker pen here. Okay, so if this is the height of your oval, one, two, three, then this should be your width, about two thirds the height of your oval. Now this is roughly, you can get out your ruler, but I want you to focus. We have more important things to worry about. And for this purpose, we're just trying to get the shape in there. And so I don't want you to worry about perfection. Remember, it's just a general rule. Okay. But if you are so inclined and you want a rounder oval, that's totally fine. Just be consistent. If you want a narrower oval, that's okay too. But in general, you want to try to have 
an oval that's shaped like this, okay? Okay, so now taking our oval, let's talk about it in a little bit more detail. So I'm gonna go back to my example here. And what do you notice? So first of all, if this slant line, if this, this shade is resting on the slant line as much as possible, it's a little tricky because we have some curvature in the strokes, but in general, what you want to notice is that I had my point here, my, my line started at a hairline, and as I approached that slant line, then I added the pressure. Do you notice how I stayed at a hairline until I passed this line? Then that was like my green light to go ahead and apply pressure, and then as I'm going to approach it again, my slant line, then I'm releasing the pressure and getting back to a hairline. Okay, so if you really were to isolate this area here, it kind of looks like just the, on the slant line is where the shade is, okay? And so what that does is it allows us to keep the hairline on the rest of the oval, and that is just this delicate shade that we want to really focus on when it comes to copper plate, when it comes to the oval, it's that delicate shade that we want to apply. What we don't want to do is have something like this where we go too fast into the oval, into our pressure. And what that does is, do you notice how in this area here, it's just thick the whole way, okay? So if you were to isolate the shade, it was practically the whole thing. Whereas here, we kind of isolated it to the area by the slant. Can you see that comparison? Okay, so we don't want to do this. We don't want to go so heavy into that shade and not get it out until we get to the bottom. We want to start sooner in releasing that pressure. Okay, and so Remember in day one and two, when we went over the capital stem or the line of universal beauty? So you can see my strokes here. So for however thick your capital stems are, you'll want to maintain that same thickness in your shade of your oval, okay? So we call this shade here a primary shade. And that just means that that is pretty much the thickest that your pen will be getting for when it comes to this stroke. So this primary shade should match the primary shade of your capital stem. You don't want a mismatch like this as your oval. And then your capital stem is super thick, okay? It just doesn't go along with each other. And then vice versa, if you have a super thick oval, which is totally fine, you don't want to have such a delicate and light capital stem. Okay, so this pair here you don't want and this pair here you don't want. If anything, you'd wanna pair these two with each other, right? And these two. All right, so let's go ahead and do the actual practice drill. So this was just information on the size and the shape of the oval. When it comes to the actual practice drill, what you're going to wanna to do is a series of ovals. So go ahead and start with your first oval. And then you're going to want to create another one and go ahead and finish that oval and lift your pen. You're going to actually do a separate oval. Then you're going to want to do another one. I'm going to adjust my page a little bit to even more get on that slant. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna just keep it here. So this is the actual drill for your ovals, okay? Sorry it's not a fun term like candy canes or twists. <laughs> These are just basically ovals. So a couple of troubleshooting tips for your own self. Make sure that that slant, that shade, I'm sorry, that shade is on the slant. Here I'm okay. I think here I noticed I was getting off of it myself. So we're not gonna, don't totally love that one. But then by the time I got to this last oval, I made sure I went back onto the slant. You want to make sure that your shades are evenly spaced apart, okay? And then last but not least, let's see if I can grab yet another color here. Let's grab this blue. Okay, I guess what fourth time is a charm? So this inside counter space that you're forming, see these little, um, not really diamond, but whatever shape you want to call this. Um, Nina calls them lenses, which I think is the cutest term. These look like little faces, right? You want to make sure that that space inside is even. Okay. And a good, a good rule of thumb on where to start your next oval is if the right side of that oval had a slant line. Okay. Like this. There we go. If that was the slant line, and you don't have to draw it this thick, you can draw it a little bit more. Um, you can use dots. Then that's where you want to start your next oval. And then it's not until you enter the oval to the left, that's when you can start applying pressure. So now I'm going to apply my pressure. And as I exit the oval, I want to be back onto my point and then I'm going to finish my oval. I love this visual. It just helps me so much to imagine where to start my next oval. Okay, let's do one more. So you can imagine if I start on that point, I don't put pressure until I enter that oval, then I release my pressure leaving that oval, and then I finish up at the top. Okay, so after this drill, if you would like to take it a step further, so let's call this the first version. The second version are running ovals, okay? Running ovals. And the way to complete this drill is to create a very wide oval like this and then cut that oval in about two thirds like this and then create your next oval and cut that oval in half bring it a little wide oh my goodness you guys it's really late and this is incredibly shaky and I lost the slant line this is just all kinds of challenging for me and you know I'm going to be honest with you I want so badly to just turn this camera off but I'm going to embrace the mistakes how can I tell you to embrace your mistakes if I'm not going to embrace mine okay let's try that one more time I'm going to turn my page a little bit more I'm going to start off with a wide oval This one's challenging. The boot camp is designed to push you. Okay, I keep losing my slant line. And I think it's wonderful to experience this with you guys. So leave a comment down below or give me like a thumbs up if this is totally resonating with you where you just are finding it super challenging to come across something that you're not used to. And I love that about the boot camp. It pushes me and I hope it pushes you to just go outside of your comfort zone. Okay, so let's troubleshoot this just a little bit and this will be our last bit here. So I'm trying to keep that slant line, that shade on the slant line. This is a little bit difficult. I think I lost the shape of my oval a couple times. Okay, this one was really off. 
And then you want to look at that those lenses, remember? And they start out not too bad, but look at how tiny this one is here. This tells me that this is a problematic area and I may not have, I think I remember in my mind when I, when I went from this oval to this oval, I was adjusting, so that kind of happened, okay? And then you also want to look at the spacing of your shade. So I started out really wide here, also wide. Um, then I kind of got my groove here, okay? And those are the ovals. So let me know what you think about this drill. It's a little tricky. I'm going to now hop on, I almost forgot. I need to hop on to my short version of the guidelines, okay? And remember, links to all of these guide sheets are down below. So let's go ahead and do the ovals, okay? So I'll first start off with just the single ovals. Pretending my slant line is there. Not putting pressure until I enter the oval, then releasing my pressure as I exit. Remembering to just go slow and enjoy this process of getting more familiar with my brush pen and conquering it and sometimes that means it's challenging and it's not so easy in the beginning sometimes that means we have to be okay with mistakes okay i'll do one more here okay then i'll do a few running ovals wish me luck here we go a little bit wider gosh you guys I have to tell you this boot camp has been not just a challenge to do but a challenge to host it is hard baby had a rough night and I wasn't able to put her to bed until almost 10 o'clock and then to make matters worse, I had to bring work home. And so it's been a long day, but thank you so much for joining me. And there you have it, the ovals for day three. I would love to hear from you if you are on day three, how the oval drill went for you. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below or just questions about the boot camp in general. And as always, I will leave the links to the boot camp down below, especially my main page here where, you'll where you can catch all of the replays or you can just continue watching them here on YouTube. Please say hi to me and Nina over on Instagram. We are trying to pop in and see all of your work. The best way to have us see our, our work is not just to tag us, but to include these hashtags here. That helps us to kind of focus and find your work there in that very busy place. So thanks so much. I'm excited for August 1st when we can do hand letter ABCs and put all these amazing strokes to work and we can actually see the capital letters that they go into. All right, I'm going to see you later in day four. Thank you so much for watching. I'd love if you subscribe to my channel or just give me a thumbs up to let me know that you're loving this boot camp and you would like to see more and I'll see you next time. Bye.